Welcome to Mechanical Comprehension for your Naval Aviation Officer Candidate Test Prep ASTB. In this lesson, we'll go over speed and acceleration, 2D motion such as projectile motion, forces, friction, spring force, torque, stress and strain, work, energy and power, and pendulum. Before you start, make sure that you have a notebook and a pen so you could write every single topics in the video on your notebook. And as always, pause the video and learn by yourself to make sure that you understand every single topics in the video. And then download this application called ASTB Tutoring App from your App Store or Google Play and practice mechanical comprehension section that will cover everything you need for your ASTV test. So let's get started. The first thing we'll learn distance and displacement. So distance is the scalar quantity that refers how much length an object has covered during its motion. Where displacement is a vector quantity that refers how far away the starting point to the end point. So say like you are walking around your swimming pool with a zigzag path. So you started in here, go all the way and stopped in here. So the, all the distance you cover is called distance. And the, the length from your starting point to the end point is called displacement. So it's not only telling the, the length, it also telling the exact direction. So that is the main difference between distance and displacement there are two things you need to know to uh, make your idea clear the first thing you need to know called vector quantity and scalar quantity so vector quantity is a quantity that has a magnitude and also a, a direction for the scalar quantity it has only the magnitude it doesn't have any any direction in this figure we'll learn distance time graph so uh, there are a few graphs in here make sure that you remember those graph uh, you learn how to do it because those are the question you might see in the actual test so the first thing um, graph a an object rest and close so you could see here this is an object so if it's um, at rest so the distance will be always same the second one is uh, figure b is a deaccelerating and then returning okay so figure c is actually accelerating is look like that okay um d d accelerating um is figure e is ca called constant speed is look like that and returning and constant is figure f so make sure that you remember this just practice a couple of times so then give you an idea um what is what so the next thing we'll learn um called a velocity right so the velocity is the rate of moving from one position to the another position so by definition the uh, vector is change and position over time so say like this is your home and you're going to uh, store uh, which is three kilometer or three miles whatever you say so if you if you start driving from home to the store so say like it takes certain amount of time so if you divide it by um, the total distance over how long it took uh, then you will get a number so that is called velocity so the unit of velocity it could be other meter per second or foot per second whatever you um, called so the next thing we we'll learn is a velocity time graph so a lot of times from the experience um, the student um, was asked in the test so see like what graph is what so make sure that you know that um, a distance time graph and velocity time graph. So the first one is a constant velocity. So say like you are driving like a constant velocity. So it will be like a straight line. The next one is constant acceleration. So that means you are starting a certain um, velocity and then you go constant speed. That means you're, you're um, is, is speeding up of your car. The next one is constant retardation the next is here is called object thrown upward if you throw an object upward 
its um, velocity time look like that. And if you um, throw a ping pong ball after first bounce, the velocity time look like that. The last one is irregular motion. So if you like stopping and going, stopping and going, so how it look like. The next thing we learn is called acceleration. So we learn the velocity and now we learn acceleration. So um, the acceleration changed in velocity over time, right? So, um, so when you start your car, you speed up, right? And then after a certain point, you start going like 60 or 70 mile an hour, right? So at that point, the speed is constant and the acceleration is zero. So um, constant speed means acceleration zero. In this figure, we'll uh, find acceleration from a velocity time graph. So say like um, an object is moving from um, this direction, right? So the acceleration is at at any time so say like at uh, 20 meter per second it takes like 10 second second um, to ramp up so the acceleration will be 20 divided by 2 uh, 10 is 2 meter per second so the the displacement will be the area under the curve okay so you could see here so this is this is this is the area under the curve will be the displacement next thing we'll learn is called projectile motion two dimensional motion so say like you are kicking a ball from the ground um, and it it hit at the ground at certain uh, period of time so mainly three things you need to know what is the velocity at um at a starting point what is the velocity at the maximum point and what is the velocity at the um the hitting point so the the maximum velocity of this uh, the ball will be when you kick the ball right and the velocity will be also zero when it goes like it's a maximum point right and also when it hit on the ground the velocity will be all zero so then the next thing we'll learn a two-dimensional motion uh, with a graph so you could see here if you if you kick the ball right starting here is, is like this is like a ideal condition so there is no air resistance right so it will be like go and it will be like the maximum point in here and then come down right but if there is an air resistance right it will be like that the vertical velocity of this um of this object look like that the red line represent with air resistance and the blue line represent without resistance same as for the um horizontal velocity look like that so the horizontal velocity you could say like that is straight um, without any resistance but um, with air resistance look like that so make sure that you, you remember those things how it look like okay so the next thing we'll learn is called circular motion so if an object move on a circular path the motion is called circular motion right so say like you are spinning a rock um, around your head with a rope right and and suddenly you snap the line so if you snap the line in here uh, from anywhere from um on this on this rope so what direction the object will go the stone will go that is actually that uh, this direction which is the perpendicular to the rope right that is the tangent so there is a relationship between angular velocity and linear velocity that is called v equal to omega r right so that this is called r and omega is called the angular velocity so make sure that you you know this thing so you're not going to ask you like in detail in in general so the next thing we'll learn is called force so say you have an object in here right so you could see that there is a car in, or someone is actually trying to push it right if you want to move something you have to do something on the object right so the force is the mass the mass of the car and how fast you want to move so so if you multiply the the mass with the acceleration that is called force right so that is called newton's second law f equal to ma remember this thing is very important where uh, m is the mass of the object and um 
and A is the acceleration. There are different types of forces. Some of them are weight, which is the gravity, friction, air resistance, tension, and normal forces. Let's, let's see a figure and compare. So say like this person is, is walking with an object, uh, right? So it has some mass. So you could see uh, the normal force is acting upward um, weight is uh, acting uh, downwards so the 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 man is moved in that direction that means the air resistance is acting is the opposite direction so you could see here friction now so what is friction so friction is the resistance um, to motion between contracting surfaces so you could see uh, this person is uh, rotating something right so there are basically two types of friction one is called a rolling friction another is called static friction so when you when you um, ride a bike and if you stop uh, pedaling what's going to happen the bike will stop why there are two reasons one is for the gravity another is for friction so that is called the rolling friction right so the friction because of its motion and the second one is called static friction say say like you, you have a book on the table, right? So if you if you want to move that, you have to break the um, the friction barrier. At, so it starts slowly. It starts slowly, slowly, and at some point you'll see that you are moving. So that means um, because of that, you have to initially apply some forces um, to break this static friction. Okay. So the next thing we we'll learn is called spring forces. So if you want to talk about the spring forces, the one thing you must need to talk is called Hooke's law. That is F equal to negative Kx. So say like you have a spring here and you have a mass is like hanging in here, right? So when you put this mass in here, what's going to happen? It will, it will deflect, right? The, it will increase the length of the spring. But the spring always try to pull this uh, object upward. So that's why is the force is acting this direction, but um, it is try to have the tendency to go upward. So that that is the reason why we have a negative kx. So f equal to negative kx, where um, f is the uh, the force you need to apply for the deflection, and k is the uh, constant of proportionality. So that means the the spring could be made out of different materials. It could be made out of gold. It could be made out of uh, steel, iron, copper, whatever. So that is the um, the constant is called K. So if you have um, multiple spring, so you could um, like connect either series, that means in a line, and also in parallel by side by side, right? So the equivalent uh, spring constant will be one over K equal to one over K and plus one over K two for in series case for the parallel the total um, equivalent uh, spring constant k equivalent will be k1 plus k2 so just make sure that you remember things you might need that so the next thing we'll learn is called stress and strain so stress is a force per unit area applied to a material so say like you have an object in here right and you are applying some load in here so if you cut that right so if you cut that, you could find the cross-sectional area, the area on the cross-section, right? And um, and then the amount of force you need in order to um, deform it. So uh, the stress is actually the force per unit area. So force, total amount of force you applied to, uh, to deform that is called stress. And the strain, so say like same thing you did here, you have an object here, you, you, you actually um, pulled it and it is, so this is original length and this is the deformation. So the strain will be um, the increased length divided by total length. So it doesn't have any unit. Next thing we'll learn different types of stress. So make sure that you remember this thing because you'll see this type of question in the test, definitely. So the first thing you need to learn is called compression. So if you look at here, one object is pressing, another side is also pressing. So that is called compression. And the tension is like pulling from um, both end. 
the share you could say like pulling another's one way and then um and then pushing from the other way so for the bending is go this direction and that so like you are bending a, a is t and the torsion is something is you are twisting okay so make sure that you you remember those figure you might see in the test so asking which one is called compression or which one is called tension the next thing we'll learn is called torque or motion of forces right so the torque is actually the twisting um of an object so you could see that the object is moving right um and that that the torque is denoted as a tau which is called um force times um the normal distance right so this is that so if you look a figure in here um so say like you have an object in here um hanging in there you have another object in here and if you want to make into equilibrium so say like you have 10 kilogram here which is um two meter from um this equilibrium point if you have and this distance is five so how much the load will be here so you could calculate using this um, the formula so the next thing we'll learn work energy and power so what is work actually you see like we do work every single day but in in science is actually work equal um force times distance so work is said to be done if a force applied on an object and it move a displacement right so it has to move okay if you don't move it is no, no work is done in in science okay so um let's do an um example in here so why this work is important say like you have two um boxes here is both of them are um 100 pound right so if you want to pull these two object the first one with a uh, 20 degree angle okay another one is with a zero angle with the horizontal so which one do you think you need more work to do to um to move these boxes so the first one you could see with a 20 degree angle it takes 1880 but without an angle um is 2000 foot pound so if you uh, pull an object with an angle you need uh, less work to do than if you want to move an object with the horizontal okay let's remember that so um you know there are different types of uh, energy right uh, so energy is the ability to do some work so if you are working something you have to have some energy if you don't have energy you cannot do anything right so there are many form of energy look like um mechanical energy okay mechanical energy included kinetic energy and potential energy heat energy sound energy electric energy chemical energy and nuclear energy so let's make sure that you remember those things so uh, sometimes they ask which is a form of energy so you could answer correct so the next thing we learn is called power and efficiency the power is the rate of work done or rate of energy transfer so the power equal to work done per unit time so let's remember the definition the and the efficiency like how efficiently do certain work so that means power in and power out or our energy in and energy out just remember these two formulas make sure that you write down on your notebook and practice the last thing we learn in this uh, video is called pendulum the most important thing you need to know about the pendulum is where the um the maximum is speed of the bob right so um and where is the minimum speed of the bob so the maximum speed of the bob um is is close to the equilibrium position so you could say the bob is more closer to the equilibrium position speed is greater at equilibrium position speed of the bob is the greatest right so in here and the uh, the speed of the bob will be the will be zero at the maximum point right so make sure that you you write down this uh, information on your notebook and watch the video multiple times okay and download the application here um and practice more whatever um lesson we have that covers everything you need for your test thank you